Hey everybody, this is Freddy Arthur and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to build this Minecraft Railway Station Selector Panel. Now this can be used for uh, any number of stations really, from 2 up to 15. If you, if you need uh, any more than 15 stations, you are going to have to mess about a little bit with this selector, uh, with this reset line here, sorry, and this reset line here because of the signal strength only being 15 before it needs to be boosted via a comparator uh, via a repeater uh, you are going to have to mess about if you want it to accommodate more than 15 stations but most people most people myself included will get away with only needing 15 stations so i'll quickly demonstrate how it works it's very very straightforward uh, and then we'll have a look at how it does what it does so if we want to go to the green station We'll press the green station button. The green station lamp lights up, uh, indicating that you're uh, you want to go to the green station. If actually you change your mind and you don't want to go to the green station, but you want to go to the purple station instead, just come over and press the purple station button. It'll remove the green station and it'll highlight the purple station. Oh, I want to go to the red station. It'll go to the red station. So uh, we've uh, we've made up our mind now. We want to go to the red station. So you go over to the the departure part of the Z arrivals over there. There's the departures over there. Depending on uh, the orientation of how you build this, the departures and the arrivals may be on opposite sides. And I'll touch on that while we're building this. Uh, but for the, the way I've got this set up, facing south, the uh, the, uh, the departures are on the left, the arrivals are on the right, but I'll make that a little bit more clear later. So we've selected our station, we've selected our my cart, and we're off. And we're at the red station. Fantastic. Now, if you, and, and it resets the, the panel as well, once you've gone through the, uh, through the, selector on the other side now if you if you select a station uh, and you press it twice it will reset the station you've just selected if you try and ride a minecart when no stations are selected you'll go straight through the system you'll finish up coming back to here and you'll get kicked out and the minecart gets recycled underneath into this cactus and that's where all of the incoming minecarts go as well they'll go into these hoppers uh, and then into a couple of droppers and a dispenser at the top which allows you to keep dispensing minecarts so let's have a look at how this works we'll we'll pick the pink station now these pistons here are activated via this um, detector rail and the reason I've done it like that is because if I just put a solid block and I'll demonstrate this now this will break it so don't don't worry this this is not what you're going to be doing but I just want to do this to demonstrate how uh, it will break if we didn't have those pistons there if we pick uh, the blue station it will automatically extend that piston if those blocks were down at the bottom if I then decided I wanted to, uh, I'd made a mistake and I wanted to go to the yellow station. It pushes out the piston for the yellow station and it will break these rails. So therefore I have to have those blocks there so that the rails don't move until you're actually in the minecart and moving. So therefore you can press these as many times as you like. And it won't activate these pistons, therefore it won't push out these rails until you're in the minecart. Now there is one proviso on this, one limitation. If you start spamming buttons, that will happen. It will break, because if we get in a minecart now and activate all of those pistons, it will push out all of those rails and it will break it. So if you've got more than one light lit up on your selector panel, press the button again in order to reset the panel okay only ride the minecart when you've got one lamp lit so uh, let's just 
stick a mic out on there so you can see what happens. So your mic out comes over this detector rail there. All of these pistons are powered, but because there's only one uh, repeater lit at the bottom, can we see it? There's only one repeater, that one there, there's only one repeater lit up because of the T flip flops here. Then only one piston is extended. So only one rail is uh, is activated. And this is only out as long as there's a minecart on the detector rail. As soon as a minecart leaves that detector rail, that piston goes back in again, which allows these double piston, the double piston extender here to reset the line. If that piston was extended, when this tried to reset the line, it would just break. Now, when your minecart goes down onto that, uh, the uh, uh, that detector rail at the bottom, the double piston extension comes out and resets all of these lines here, which also resets the selector panel, allowing the next person to come along and ride the minecart. So I'm just going to show you once more because I think it's fantastic. Oh, also before I do the uh, the. Uh, Arrivals section of the station relies on an activator rail. Uh, now, if you've ever put a minecart on an activator rail that's powered, that's what happens. You get kicked off. Or if you want to use this for uh, mobs in a mob grinder or your villager breeder, then use an activator rail that will kick them out of the minecart. It's really useful. But when you're in survival, if you've just got a solid block above you like that, You'll jump out and you'll take damage, which is why we need to swap it for a bottom slab and a stair. And that way, when you get kicked out of the minecart, you don't take any suffocation damage. So bear that in mind when you're deciding on what block to use to build this thing. You will need a, sl a slab and a, st a stair variant. Otherwise, it's going to stand out. So we want to go to the blue. Station. And there we are, at the blue station. So now you know how it works, let's start building this thing. So I'll put a list of everything you need to build this thing on the screen now. Pause the video if you need to. Now you've got your area you want to build it in, you want to make sure that you know which side the departures and which side you want the arrivals to be on. Now, if you're building this facing south, the departures are going to be on the left, the arrivals are going to be on the right. But there's an easier way of doing this rather than trying to remember that, that rails always snap southwards. Uh, and eastwards and, and whatever, it, it, that just gets very complicated. So what you need to do is determine where your select panel is going to be. We're going to put our select panel somewhere about there. OK, it's going to be running that way. We are facing uh, facing south. OK, what you need to do is grab yourself some normal rails and run them parallel with your select panel. And then you want to run another couple of rails next to that. These are going to be the rails that are pushed by the piston. Then grab yourself a piston, put a button next to it, press a button. And that will, it, the, the rails will always kink the same way. Okay, so now you know that your departures have got to be on this side. Because if you come down here in your minecart, you will go off into the wide open world. If you had your departures on the right hand side, you'd come down here, you'd go along here and you'd go straight over and you'd be you'd end up back back in the station. So, you know, if you're facing south, if you're facing this way, then you need your departures on the left hand side. If you were facing east or west, and again, if you're facing uh, you know, east or west, the departures and arrivals are going to be on opposite sides. So you've just got to be very, very careful. So if we were facing, uh, we're now facing east. OK, so we've got our select panel here. We'll run down a couple of mine carts, uh, sorry, a couple of rails like this. Grab yourself a piston. Press a button. And the 
uh, the, the kink is that way. So now we know on this one, if we're facing east, we need our departures on the right hand side and our arrivals are going to be on the left hand side. You see, so that's opposite. Uh, that's on the opposite side. And if you were facing south, so always before you start building this, always make sure that you do this little experiment to find out which way the rails kink. Otherwise, you will build it all only to find that you've put the arrivals and the departures on the wrong side. I know I'm banging on about it, but it is important. Please do this little test first. It will save us all a lot of messing about. So now we've found out where we want to build it, we need to dig a trench directly underneath where the selector panel is going to be. So obviously you need to find out or you need to uh, dig a trench depending on how many stations that you want to go to. So if we have it for seven stations, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've dug a trench for seven stations. We want to dig another trench just behind that. And then we want to put dust on the floor just there. And then we need to grab a repeater and put repeaters just there like that. Now you want to take out your block of choice and put a block directly above this dust. I'm going to be using polished granite for this one because it's my favorite block. It's not really my favorite block, but it's just easy to count, you see, because uh, if you were, if I were to use stone, it's very difficult to count. So I'll use polished granite. So you want to put those blocks down like that. Now on top of these blocks, you need to stick down a redstone lamp. And then on top of that, you want to put down some more blocks and just encase it in around the sides. Now underneath the redstone lamps, you want to put yourself down a button. Now use a wooden button if you can. It gives a longer tick uh, and it means that the, the lamps don't flash. I'll, let, me, let me put the, the mechanism in around the back and then I'll show you what I mean. So if we stick some buttons on there to start with so then get yourself over the back like this and then you want to jump in this trench where your repeaters are and you need to put a dropper and it's got to be a dropper not a dispenser you need to put droppers facing inwards like that and then get yourself up on top of the uh, on top of this wall on top of here you want to crouch and then you want to put a another dropper facing upwards off the face of the dropper that you've just put down. So now you've got something that looks like that. And then you want to get yourself some hoppers and you want to put some hoppers facing straight down into the back dropper. Make sure your nozzles facing down and then you want to put another hopper facing into these hoppers. So you'll need to crouch and then you need to put hoppers there like that very important that all those nozzles are pointing into these hoppers and the those hopper nozzles are pointing down into the droppers if you've got those pointing into each other this is not going to work it's going to break now what you need to do is stick one item any old item any old item any 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 old item in these droppers Like that. Now you want to take out your comparators and put a comparator coming off the back of every one of these droppers. They should all light up because you should have something in there. And if you don't have something in there, your comparator won't light up. So make sure you have got something in there because if you haven't, this is not going to work. Now coming off the front of these comparators, you're going to need a solid block. And on top of that solid block, you're going to need a redstone torch. And above the redstone torch, you're going to need another solid block. And then off this side of that solid block, you're going to need another torch. Like that. Now you want to spin yourself round so you're facing the front 
grab yourself your repeaters again and you want to put a repeater on standard one tick on top of all of these hoppers okay now all of these lights should turn on now just press a button and they should all go out because the item has been pushed if we can look at this the item has been pushed from this dropper where you put it initially back into the front dropper so if we press the button the the button will force the item from there up into that dropper which goes into that dropper which falls back down into the back sorry hopper hopper falls into the back dropper there which will be detected by the this uh, the uh, comparator there and then if you press the button again the, the re uh, repeater there puts power into that block which forces the item in the back dropper back into the front dropper and that's how it resets all of the all of the hoppers uh, all of the uh, uh, the T flip flops okay so that because that button will only power that dropper it forces the item around into the back dropper but the same button powers all of the back droppers now if there's nothing in the back dropper it's not going to it's not going to do anything because there's nothing in it but if there is something in the back dropper it's going to force it uh, it's going to force it from the back one back into the front therefore resetting the switch like that now as i mentioned try and use a wooden button if you can because if you don't it flashes like that because the pulse on a stone button is slightly shorter than the pulse on a wooden button therefore it runs out just before the item has a chance to get all the way around the back and go through the the system so use a wooden button if you can or if you don't mind having the little flash use a stone button I mind the little flash I'm going to use a wooden button so now you should have something that looks like that now whip out your repeaters and you want to go to the block that's behind the back of the comparators this one here and you want to put a repeater facing backwards on all of these blocks like that and then you want to put a solid block on the uh, level with the the block at the top that's got the torches on the other side of it okay so you've got your, your torches and a block then put an, a line of solid blocks running all the way down the length of that then add one on the end so you've got that now take out your sticky pistons and you want to get underneath those blocks that you've just put down you want to look up and you need to put a piston sticky piston facing down off the face of all of these blocks bar the one on the end okay and then you want to put a solid block on the face of all of those sticky pistons now when your when your minecart comes past a detector rail that's going to be here it's going to fire all of those pistons down and depending on which one of these repeaters is uh, is uh, is powered at the time it's going to put a pulse into some pistons to push the rails over so that's what they are that's what they're there for now take out your normal pistons and you want to put a normal piston facing towards the back on that block there so you're missing a gap from the repeaters and you're putting down some normal pistons so now you should have something that looks like that now you want to take out your redstone dust and you need to put a line of dust all the way along the top of these blocks that are next to the uh, the the sticky pistons facing down don't put them on the block next to it because that's going to be powered by those torches okay so it's got to be on the on the back one and then take out the solid block and you need to put a torch underneath this to power all of those so if you stick a block just there put a torch on it you now need to dig out underneath there and put a torch underneath that one which turns the the torch off that's powered therefore that's off 
and then you're going to need to just dig down a couple of blocks and put a blob of dust just there. That blob of dust is going to be activated by the uh, the uh, detector rail that we're going to put on the top here, and that will uh, that will power all of those pistons. So now you can fill that bit in around there, and then take yourself out some powered rails and a detector rail, and you want to put a detector rail on there. And then you need to run some powered rails all the way down the front. We'll sort that out in a little while. And then just dig out underneath there and put down a powered torch. But be careful you don't activate any of this redstone when you're sticking your torch down there. And then you want to run powered rails. And you're really best off using powered rails if you can. You need to run powered rails down so it's level with the front of the, uh, of the pistons. Then you need to take out your normal rails and run a line of normal rails all the way along the front of the pistons. And then go one further out to here and then run a line of powered rails back up to the front again. And this is going to be your uh, your arrivals. And then again, you just want to dig a couple of these out, put a torch underneath, fill them back in again. Now whip out your normal rails again and put a line of normal rails directly across the front of the pistons like that. And don't forget, you need to power these rails too. So now you should have something that looks a little bit like that. Now it's time to put in some double piston extension. So get yourself back over to the back of the farm. You want to count five blocks from the uh, from these rails. So one, two, three, four, fifth block. Put down a solid block. OK, so it's in line with your last station and then just run those solid blocks the entire length of your station. So if you've got 15 stations, 15 sticky pistons, you're going to have to put 15 blocks. Pretty straightforward. And then face, uh, coming off these blocks facing forward, you need to put down a sticky piston. And then coming off the front of those blocks, you need to put down a regular piston. Now get yourself your uh, observer blocks and you need to put an observer block with the redstone part at the front and the smiley face detection part at the back. So you get yourself in between your rails and your pistons here. And then you want to put down a line of observers on top of the sticky pistons at the back with the, the redstone part facing forward. And then you want to put another line of, of observer blocks on top of the normal pistons with the redstone part facing forwards. And then you want to run a line of redstone dust all the way down the back of them like that. Now whip out your solid block again and you want to put a, a solid block there with a bit of dust on top of it. And then you need to dig down a few blocks because you need to put a, a torch on there. And then you want to put a torch underneath that. So we've got the we've got a torch there powering that torch, which turns it off, which powers those uh, which powers that dust. Now you want to take out your bestest digging pick and you want to get to the front of the uh, the pistons here and you need to dig out here and you need to dig down two blocks. So run a trench. The full length of your pistons two blocks deep and now you want to dig backwards that way eight blocks so one two three four five six seven eight and then dig all of this out so now you should have something that looks like that now you want to jump in your hole and you want to count back three blocks so one two three and then you want to dig another trench that's two blocks deep just here and you want to fill that with redstone like that now you need to jump into your little trench here and you need to dig out a bit of an area just around here just give yourself a little bit of room and then you want to stick yourself down a repeater just here and then a couple of pieces of dust around there and then a repeater going into the block that's got the torch on it so every time this dust is now powered via the detector rails that are going to be above it just here it's going to turn off this torch which is going to turn on that torch which is going to reset or it's going to fire the double pistons which will reset all of these lines here 
And you may as well leave that open because we're going to use that bit of redstone there. We're going to run a line up here, which is also going to reset the control panel. So it'll reset these lamps as well. But we'll do that in a second. So get yourself back in the hole again now. And you need to stick down a line of uh, uh, some solid blocks above the top of that redstone. Now, bearing in mind, you are going to need to know where this is. Uh, so just make sure you remember where it is. It's the one just behind the back of that torch as you're looking at it. Now we're going to stick some powered rails in here. So get yourself right to the very front. Just here. Another trench. I'm a big fan of trenches. Dig another trench just here. Now... I'm, I'm digging trenches and I'm putting redstone torches at the bottom of trenches. If you want to, and if you've got enough redstone to do it, if you want to just use a redstone block instead of putting a powered tor uh, putting a torch and then a block above it, then feel free to do it. You can you can use a uh, a block of redstone if you want to, but this is a little bit more survivor friendly. So get yourself some redstone torches on the bottom like that. And then cover them over with solid blocks. And then you want to run two powered rails. And then you want to run a detector rail. And then you want to run powered rails down to the end. Down to here. Okay, but the only reason that's powered at the moment is because there's a torch underneath there. What you're going to need to do is dig out. Me in trenches again. Dig out another trench just there. Okay, you can't you can't dig that one out because if you dig that one out, and put a redstone torch there, it's going to power everything. So you've got to make sure you come to this one here, and then put another line of redstone torches down there. Cover it over, and now you need to stop. You need to do exactly the same for as many stations as you've got. This is not going to be easy. You can't now just put a line of uh, a line of rails there, otherwise they're going to snap together with the ones that are already there. So in order to stop that from happening, you're going to need to pop out these blocks at the front, and you're going to have to put down a temporary block just there, temporary rail, sorry, just there, and a temporary rail at the other end. And then you can put down your powered rails and your detector rail and your powered rails. You can then break the temporary rails that are at either end and put them on either end of the rail that you've just put down and then you can put a solid block at that end okay and then you do it again so you put down your four powered rails a detector rail and your two uh, powered rails break that replace it with a block put down another uh, put down another rail break that put down another rail if we were to try to put down rails now without putting the extended rail at the end, that will happen. And it's going to break. So you can't do that. You've got to make sure you have the block at the uh, the rail at the end, which stops them from snapping together. Like that. Then you can break the temporary rail, put a block there, extend that rail and do it again. Okay, so it's a little bit tedious, but it, it, it's very, very necessary. Without it, you won't be able to get these rails where you want them. So now you should have something that looks like that. And now, as I mentioned, every time you uh, every time you come across here, you go down into here, depending on which station you want to go to. When your powered rail goes over, uh, sorry, when your uh, minecart goes over that detector rail there, it's going to power that dust. It's going to force out all of those pistons, resetting all of this line of rails. Now you want to whip out your pick again and you need to dig another trench. Uh, that's leading from this dust, that bit of, bit of dust just there, all the way to the uh, to the front. So this wants to be too deep. And you want to come down to here. Okay. 
and then you want to run that's going to be you'll have to pop that out as well then you'll have to run a line of dust up towards the front when you get to here where the redstone torch is you'll need to stick down a repeater and then you want to run another line of dust up to up to the front here now that needs to be connected to the redstone that's underneath those blocks there now so the easiest way to do it is to just pop out uh, pop out those blocks we can replace them in a second and then you want to run a line of uh, dust there there and there and then stick another repeater there to boost the signal because if you've got 15 stations all the way down there you're going to need a repeater there so you've got that and now we just need to fill this back in again stick yourself down a torch because nobody likes flashing redstone and then replace the broken rail so now you should have something that looks like that so now's as good a time as any to give it the first test so wish yourself around the front uh, and select any old station we'll select that station so it's the one on the, the right hand side. Grab yourself down a minecart, just put a minecart there and then uh, just set it off and run in. There you go. So it, uh, it activated the rail that you wanted it, the station that you wanted it to activate. Uh, it went down the right track and it also reset everything. Now let's try the one that's closest. Perfect. So at least we know it's working at the moment. So now it's time to stick in the system that recycles the minecarts when they come back into the station. Now remember, this, de uh, this is determined by which side is your departure and which side is your arrival side. Because of how our rails bend in the first place, this is our departure so this is where our droppers and hoppers are going to droppers and dispensers are going to go this is where our minecarts are going to come in if you've got your departures on this side and your arrivals on this side you'll need to do what we're doing here mirrored so you'll have to do this the opposite way around but because our departures are on the left we'll, we'll build it this way around so you want to come to the to the to the front and you want to build yourself a little wall here so this is going to be where uh, you're, you're going to go through to get into your minecart. Your minecart is going to come up just there. Okay. And then you want to dig down three blocks down there. Okay. And now you want to grab yourself a two, two droppers and one dispenser. So you want to put a dropper at the bottom, then a dropper on top of it, and then dispenser on top of that. The, the ones at the bottom have got to be droppers. The two at the bottom have got to be droppers. The one at the top has got to be a dispenser. Now what you need to do is dig out. Me and dig in. You need to dig out a three block deep trench again. It's three wide. And you want to do this all the way down the front. To the other end. This is just to give yourself a bit of room. You're, you're going to fill most of this back in again. And then you want to do the same over that side that you've done over this side. So grab yourself your blocks of choice again and do yourself a little arch. And then on this block here, this is going to be the block that kicks you out when you get you're going to come in on your uh, on your arrivals into the station. This block is going to kick you out. So on here, you need to put yourself down an activator rail. So stick an activator rail down just there. And then underneath that, underneath that block, you'll need to put down a torch because it needs to be powered. Now, every time a minecart goes over that, it'll kick whatever's in it out. And they're great for mob farms and, uh, and villager breeders as well. If you need a, uh, if you've got a mob farm that collects mobs in minecarts and moves them somewhere, then activator rails are brilliant for kicking mobs out of minecarts. It'll also kick players out as well. Now, just after this activator rail, you need to dig a hole. So this hole, fill that in, fill that in, fill that in. This hole is going to be where your minecarts fall down. So when you get kicked out of your minecart here, the minecart's going to go into this hole, fall down. Now, 
Get yourself back over to this side. We're going to have to put in a bit of redstone to power these droppers and dispensers. So grab yourself a, a hopper and you need to put a hopper coming out of the bottom dropper. Well, you need a, a hopper, sorry, going into the bottom dropper just there. And then you want to put a hopper going into that hopper, a hopper into that hopper, hopper into that hopper, and then a hopper into that hopper like that. OK, and we probably want to put one just there just to be safe. And then in here, you want to put yourself down a bit of sand. You'll need to break that block because cactus won't grow with a block next to it. And then you want to put yourself down a cactus just there and then stick yourself down a block over the top of it to stop it from growing. Now, bearing in mind this, these blocks are going to be visible. So that block there needs to be your block of choice. Make it a nice one. Now you want to take out your solid blocks again and you need to fill this little area in just there. And then you want to put a solid block just there directly underneath that block there. OK, I keep saying there and there, but you can see where I mean. It's got to it's got to go there. And then on top of that block, you'll need to put down a blob of redstone dust. And then you'll need a repeater coming out of the side of that. You'll need to break that block there, put a blob of dust there and there, and then another repeater just there. Now you need that repeater going into the dropper. OK, you can't have that repeater doing that going into a block, because if it goes into a block, and not directly into the dropper or the, the uh, sorry directly into the dropper it won't power the bottom dropper it will only power the middle one okay so that repeater has got to go into the side of that dropper it's very important and that way it'll power the bottom dropper it'll power the middle dropper and it will power the top dispenser as well now you want to take out a button we'll use the same as we've got over there and you want to put a button just there. Now, every time you press that button, you should be able to hear the dispensers going. Now, throw something into these droppers, uh, into these hoppers. That'll make its way around to the bottom dropper. And then if you press the button once, it should make its way up. So it's made its way up to the middle dropper. Press it again, and it gets fired out the top. Okay, and that's exactly what happens with the minecarts. The, the minecarts are going to go into the bottom one. And then when you press that button to dispense a, a minecart at the top, one of the minecarts in the bottom dropper are going to be forced up into the middle. And then it's going to get forced up out of the top. Now, you could use an item elevator to get the items into the top dropper, uh, top dispenser, and then power them using a button. But because minecarts aren't stackable, if the bottom dropper gets full, uh, the uh, the clock will probably break the the automatic clock forcing the items out up up the item elevator it will probably break so therefore if we use a manual button to power the the droppers and dispensers it won't break which is why I do it so now what you need to do is grab yourself some powered rails and you want to run some powered rails from your cactus all the way over to here. You need to grab a normal rail as well just to go around the corner. And then you can either power this from underneath like that, or you can power it from the top. It's entirely up to you. And then you want to do the same just here. So now anytime a minecart comes down here and test this as well, don't just take my word for it. You'll need to test it. Check and test, check and test. Actually, if you do that without having blocks here it will probably not go down so stick yourself down some blocks like that there you go and that's finished up in the bottom dropper now if you press that button now while it's in the bottom dropper nothing is going to happen you need to stick a normal rail on top of that dispenser as well it's got to be a normal rail don't put a powered rail on there if you put a powered rail on there like that and it's powered then that's going to happen and it'll go off without you. 
So that rail there has got to be a normal rail. And that way, when you press a button, it'll come out and it'll wait for you. And then you've just got to get in it and then just push forward and, and off you go. And when you get round to the end, when you come back into the station again, you get kicked out because of the activator rail. Perfect. So that's working OK. Now what we need to do is fill all of this back in again. Now don't forget to put a bit of light down the bottom. You don't want mobs spawning down here, do you? You certainly don't want mobs jumping in minecarts and messing you about. So now you should have something that looks like that. Well, if you've got this far, congratulations. Well done. Pat yourself on the back. You've built yourself a really fantastic minecart station uh, that's fully resettable and automatic and everything else. As I say, press more than one button, get two lights up, make sure you reset it. Because if you don't, there are going to be tears. Only, only go out off in your minecart when you've got one of the lights activated. So now what you need to do is throw down a few, a few minecarts. Get a few in the system to start with. Brilliant. And now this is your uh, arrivals line. So all of the lines coming from around your world need to come in onto this line here. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. If you want to run. You want to run a line down here like this, and then we can pop that out. Being careful not to make sure you don't pop something out where you've got redstone on the other side of it. There you go. Something like that. And then all of your all of your lines can then run in onto that line there. OK, and then they'll they'll come in here. Uh, they'll either come backwards and then bounce off there and then go up to the uh, up to the arrivals part or or what I mean that's up to you. you I don't know how your world is set out so I've got no idea how your uh, arrivals are going to uh, are going to be coming into your station but that is your arrivals line if as I mentioned before if you've built this uh, with the arrivals on the left then it's just it's just mirrored it's exactly the same only mirrored you'll want the arrivals on this side the departures are going to be on that side now it's just a case of making it look pretty we're going to make it look pretty using using granite. So now we've got that and then it's just down to test it. OK, so we press the button. My cot should get dispensed. We haven't selected a station, so we're back here again. We get kicked out. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention, I should have mentioned this before, and I think I mentioned it at the beginning. When you're in survival, let me go into survival. When you're in survival, you will take damage if there are solid blocks above there. Because when it kicks you out, you do take damage. So in order to prevent that, just grab yourself a stair and a slab. Now in 1.13, granite doesn't have stairs and slabs variants. So we are going to have to use good old fashioned stone. I'm going to pop those two blocks out. You'll need to put a, a slab just there and then a stair like that. And obviously, if you've built all of this out of the same blocks, you're not going to know that they're they're not solid blocks. But what that does, if I go back into survival, it stops you from taking damage when you get kicked out of your minecart. Brilliant. Now, if you want to stop people running down your down your tracks like this, all you have to do is put yourself down a slab there, and put yourself down a slab just there, and that way people can't run down your tracks. And you probably also want to stick a solid block just there and that's going to stop you accidentally falling down the hole. 
So now all you need to do is decorate it in any style that you want. You just need to be careful. There are a couple of couple of points on here where you can't really be covering up any of the redstone. I mean, if you want to put a wall down here, that's that's fine. You can do that. If you want to cover over all of the redstone in the middle, that's that's fine. So people can't see it. Entirely up to you. So you can do that. You've just got to be careful when it comes to covering over redstone torches. OK, so try not to cover over a torch uh, if you can help it, because that could potentially cause you a few problems. So that's how you make a minecart station. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I really do appreciate it. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to leave it a like. And if you've really loved it, don't forget to subscribe for future tutorials. This is Frilly Off, and I'm out of here.